Will level five full autonomy become mainstream by 2030? Hell no. It's gonna be a clusterfuck of bureaucratic red tape, corporate greed, and human idiocy holding it back. Level five autonomy, cars driving themselves better than your average Vegas cabbie, snorting lines off the dashboard, requires flawless tech, which we're nowhere near perfecting. Sensors still get fooled by fog, snow, or a stray plastic bag doing the tumbleweed dance. By 2030, maybe we'll have glorified Roombas that can parallel park without shitting themselves. But full autonomy? That's a pipe dream unless Elon shoves a Neuralink up every car's ass and makes him sentient. I bet my left tit were stuck with level three or four at best. Half-assed systems that still need you to jerk the wheel when they inevitably fuck up. Want to make a real prediction? Stick a dildo-shaped joystick in your Tesla and call it manual override for the next decade. How will cities be redesigned when human driving is obsolete? Cities will turn into a horny, chaotic orgy of self-driving chaos. No more parking lots eating up half the goddamn land. Imagine Vegas boulevards crammed with moving bars, strip clubs on wheels, and AI-driven taco trucks racing to your drunk ass at 3 a.m. Roads will shrink because robot cars don't need five lanes to compensate for human fuck-ups. They'll zip in tight formations like a swarm of metal cockroaches. Sidewalks, gone. Replaced by floating walkways or some sci-fi bullshit where you're beamed to the casino via drone. Traffic lights? Useless. Bots will talk to each other faster than a hooker negotiating on Fremont Street. Old parking garages? Turn them into vertical brothels or weed farms. Problem is, cities will still be choked with red tape. Corrupt mayors and urban planners jerking off to outdated zoning laws will slow it down. Poor neighborhoods? They'll get stuck with glitchy knockoff autonomous Ubers while the rich get chauffeured in gold-plated Cybertrucks. By the time human driving's dead, cities will be a dystopian wet dream, part Blade Runner, part Mad Max, with a side of glitter and despair. What economic impact will self-driving trucks have on logistics and labor? Self-driving trucks will slash logistics costs like a horny teenager popping his first cherry. Fewer drivers means no salaries, no piss breaks, no union bullshit, and 24-7 hauls without some trucker blowing his load at a sketchy rest stop. Companies like Amazon and Walmart will cream their pants, cutting shipping costs by 30% or more, which means cheaper crap for consumers and fatter profits for corporate dickheads. But here's the rub. Millions of truckers, 3.5 million in the US alone, are gonna be fucked harder than a cheap Vegas call girl. These guys will be out of jobs, replaced by bots that don't need coffee or meth to stay awake. Small towns built on truck stops? Ghost towns by 2035. Diners serving nothing but dust and broken dreams. The flip side? Tech firms will rake in billions, hiring nerds to fix glitchy AI when it inevitably shits the bed on a desert highway. Supply chains will get leaner, but expect a spike in unemployed dudes rioting or turning to only with their CB radios as props. Logistics will be a capitalist wet dream, but labor's gonna need a big ass dildo to ease the pain. How will insurance policies adapt to a world without human drivers? Insurance will turn into a whole new circle jerk of corporate bullshit, shifting from dumb human smashing fenders to AI fuck-ups and hacker pricks. Without human drivers, policies won't be about your drunk ass rear-ending a minivan, but about who's liable when some self-driving Tesla decides to yeet yourself into a slot machine. Premiums will probably drop at first. Bots crash less than idiots texting about their Tinder date, but insurers will find new ways to screw you, jacking rates for algorithmic error or cyber intrusion risk. Manufacturers like Tesla will get stuck footing the bill when their car's AI trips falls, so expect them to bundle bullshit extended autonomy warranties with every purchase. Hackers? They'll hold your car hostage via ransomware, demanding Bitcoin while your Cybertruck does donuts in a strip club parking lot. Small-time insurers will get fucked too. Big dogs like Allstate will merge with tech giants to cover the AI clusterfuck, leaving you with policies that read like a 500-page EULA for your toaster. Endgame? You'll pay less, but get bent over by fine print, and every crash will spark a courtroom orgy over whether the code, the cloud, or some Russian bot is to blame. Could autonomous vehicles eliminate 90% of traffic deaths? Shit, yeah, they could, if we weren't so fucked at building perfect machines. Autonomous vehicles with level five brains, none of that half-ass level three bullshit, could theoretically drop traffic deaths by 90%, no lie. Humans are absolute garbage behind the wheel, drunk, distracted, or just plain stupid, causing over 35,000 US deaths a year. Bots don't get hammered or scroll X while merging. Any GSA data backs it up. 94% of crashes are human error. But here's the kicker. AI ain't flawless. Glitchy sensors, hack systems, or a random coyote darting across the 15 freeway can still fuck things up. 
To hit that 90% drop, every car's got to be autonomous, infrastructure's got to be smarter than a pimp's lawyer, and we need to keep dipshit pedestrians from playing Frogger. Even then, you'll still get some fatalities when a server shits itself or a solar flare fries the grid. So, sure, 90%'s doable, but don't expect zero. We'll just trade car wrecks for some new age robot-induced clusterfuck. Wanna bet? I'll shove a spark plug up my ass if we hit zero deaths by 2035. What infrastructure upgrades are essential for autonomous vehicles to thrive? You'll need to pave the way with some hard fucking upgrades, or these autonomous assholes will be dead on arrival. First, roads need to be smoother than a porn star's wax junk. No potholes or faded lines screwing up sensors. So we're talking billions in repaving and laser precise lane markers. Every inch of blacktop's got to scream, I'm robot ready. Next, slap 5G towers everywhere. Low latency V2X comms so cars can sext each other about traffic faster than a dealer slinging coke on the strip. Traffic lights? Rip them out. Replace with AI hubs that micromanage intersections like a dominatrix with a whip. Also, mandatory high-def 3D maps, none of that Google Maps shit, updated in real time for every construction cone and rogue tumbleweed. Power grids need to be beefed up to charge fleets of electric robot cars without blacking out half the city. And don't forget cybersecurity. Fortify the cloud like Fort Knox, or some 15-year-old hacker will turn your cyber truck into a strip club battering ram. Without this, AVs will be like limp dicks in a whorehouse. All promise, no action. Cities better start now, or it's a trillion dollar circle jerk by 2040. Will robotaxis make car ownership obsolete? Hell yeah. Robot taxis will fuck car ownership so hard, it'll be like trying to fuck with a chastity belt on. But only for city slickers and those too broke to afford a garage in this overpriced hellhole. Picture this. Fleets of self-driving Teslas prowling the strip, picking up your drunk ass for pennies compared to owning a car. Gas. Insurance. Maintenance. All that shit's gone. Poof. Why buy a depreciating hunk of metal when you can summon a bot car faster than a hooker to a high roller? Urban areas will see ownership tank, maybe 70% fewer personal cars by 2040, freeing up space for more casinos or whatever else Vegas shits out. But rural folks, they're screwed. Robot taxis won't haul ass to BFE where the nearest charger is 100 miles away. Plus, some rich pricks will always want their custom Cybertruck to flex, like a gold-plated dildo on wheels. Problem is, cities will get gridlocked with robot taxi fleets fighting like roided up pimps for fares, and regulators will tax the shit out of them to keep car makers from going bankrupt. So yeah, car ownership's on its way to the graveyard for most, but it'll still linger like a STD in the sticks or for status whores. Wanna race a robot taxi bare ass to prove you still need a car? I'm game. How will autonomous vehicles handle ethical decision making in, tra in crash scenarios? Oh shit, this is where the robot morality train derails faster than a Vegas junkie's bender. Autonomous vehicles in crash or die scenarios, like choosing between pancaking a pedestrian or veering into a bus full of kids, are gonna be a fucking ethical minefield. Programmers will have to code some cold ass calculus into these metal bastards, probably based on ulterior motive, minimize harm, save the most lives, or whatever maximizes social good, AKA whatever keeps the lawyer's dick soft. Think algorithms crunching numbers on human worth, age, health, criminal record, like some dystopian Tinder swipe deciding who lives. But here's the spicy bit. No one agrees on the right call. Germans want cars to save kids over grannies. Americans will scream, fuck fairness, save me. Cultural preferences will turn these cars into schizophrenic death judges, programmed differently by region or whoever's greasing the coder's palms. And don't expect transparency. Manufacturers will guard those decision trees tighter than a nun's chastity belt. Worst case? Hackers rig the system to prioritize VIPs or fuck over minorities, turning your robot taxi into a racist grim reaper. By 2030, expect endless lawsuits, ex-platform riots, and some tech bro claiming the AI did it while you're stuck dodging a self-driving death machine. Wanna test it? Let's chuck a mannequin on the road and see if the car picks you or a dog to splatter. What are the privacy concerns with constant data collection in autonomous vehicles? Privacy is gonna get violated harder than a tourist at a Vegas bachelor party, and it's fucking terrifying. Autonomous vehicles are rolling narcs, slurping every goddamn detail. Your location, speed, who's in the car, what you're bitching about on the phone, even how long you lingered at that shady massage parlor off the strip. They're rigged with cameras, mics, and sensors that make a CIA spook cream his pants, uploading it all to some corporate cloud owned by Tesla, Google, or whatever soulless fucks running the show. 
This data is a gold mine, sold to advertisers who will know you jerk off to energy drinks before hitting the casino. Or worse, hacked by some Russian shitlord who'll blackmail you with footage of that backseat quickie. Governments? They'll beg for a taste, tracking your every move to bust you for jaywalking or some dystopian thought crime. No human driver means no one to unplug the snitch box. Cars will narc 24-7. Fixes? Fat chance. You could shove a Faraday cage up the car's ass to block signals, but good luck with that when the AI won't drive without its cloud daddy. By 2035, opting out will mean walking, and even then, street cams will track your sorry ass. Wanna fight it? Hack the car, rip out its data guts, and ride it like a rogue dildo on wheels until the feds drone strike your ass for privacy terrorism. Will autonomous vehicles integrate with drones and delivery robots in one ecosystem? Hell yeah, they're gonna fuck like rabbits and spawn a delivery orgy so wild, you'll think the streets are a goddamn sci-fi porn set. Autonomous vehicles, drones, and delivery bots will hook up in one slick ecosystem, sharing data faster than a pimp passing out business cards on the strip. Picture this, your Tesla rolls up with groceries, syncs with a drone that yeets your sushi order to your balcony, while a sidewalk bot humps your Amazon package to the doorstep, all orchestrated like a robotic circle jerk via 5G and AI. They'll talk to each other, swapping routes and dodging traffic like a swarm of horny cyborgs, cutting delivery times to minutes. Warehouses will spit out goods like a slot machine on a hot streak, with trucks feeding drones that feed bots. No human fuck-ups in sight. But it's not all roses. Hackers will turn this into a clusterfuck, redirecting your pizza drone to some frat house or crashing bots into each other for shits and giggles. Plus, cities will choke on zoning laws and red tape, and rural areas will get screwed, left with nothing but tumbleweeds and dial-up. By 2035, Urban hubs will be a buzzing hive of robot bullshit, but don't expect it to play nice everywhere. Want to see it in action? Let's strap a dildo to a drone and see if it can deliver to your hood without getting shot down. All right, let's talk about the future of Mars missions. What's the biggest technical hurdle left in landing humans on Mars? The biggest technical hurdle is a bitch that'll make you wish you stayed on Earth jerking off in a bunker. Landing humans on Mars is a cock tease. Efficiency, descent, and landing. EDL is a motherfucker. The Martian atmosphere is thinner than a Vegas hooker's patience, so parachutes alone won't cut it for slowing down a massive crude lander without turning it into a flaming turd. You need retro propulsion, big ass rockets firing to decelerate like some sci-fi wet dream, but scaling that up for a human mission? We're talking SpaceX Starship level thrust, and even their shit's still blowing up on test pads. The lander's gotta weigh 20 tons or more, dwarfing Curiosity's puny ass, and we've got no reliable way to land that heavy without smashing into a billion dollar crater. Dust storms, unpredictable terrain, and a seven minute comms delay mean you can't remote pilot this fucker either. AI's gotta make split second calls or everyone's eating regolith. Oh, and radiation will fry your astronauts balls en route unless you've got shielding thicker than a porn star's skull. By 2035, we might crack it, but only if NASA stops circle jerking with budgets and Elon shoves a neural link up the lander's ass for perfect precision. Wanna test it? Let's strap a dildo to a rocket and see if it sticks the landing in the desert first. How will we create sustainable food, water, and oxygen on Mars? Sustainable food, water, and oxygen on Mars. Shit, it'll be like trying to grow a dick in a desert vacuum, but we'll make it work with some batshit ingenuity. Food's the easiest. Hydroponics and algae bats will turn out nutrient-packed slime faster than a Vegas buffet line. Think leafy greens, potatoes, and maybe some lab-grown meat if we smuggle a few stem cells past Earth's vegan police. Water's trickier. Mars has ice, but it's dirtier than a Fremont Street hooker's stilettos. We'll need rovers with drills and microwave melters to extract and purify that shit. Plus, recycling every drop of astronaut piss like it's fine whiskey. Oxygen? Electrolysis can split water into breathable O2, but you'd better have nuclear reactors or solar farms the size of a casino lot to power it. Mars's sun is weak as fuck, Closed loop systems will scrub CO2 like a stripper scrubbing for tips, turning it back into air. The catch? Dust storms will fuck your solar panels, and one leaky habitat seal means you're choking on red dirt. By 2039, we might have a greenhouse dome serving Martian kale smoothies, but scaling it for a colony is a pipe dream unless we're 3D printing algae tanks with robot arms. Want to taste the future? I'll shove a tube of algae paste up your ass and call it Martian cuisine. Would it be possible that we send humanoid robots to Mars first to do all the grunt work, building buildings, doing, uh, getting our food ready, but preparing us 
humans to arrive. Fuck yeah. Sending humanoid robots to Mars first is totally doable. It's like pimping out a bunch of metal bitches to prep the red planet for our sorry asses. These bot boys, think Boston Dynamics on steroids, could be hauling ass by 2030, 3D printing habitats out of Martian dirt tougher than a stripper's pole grip. They dig regolith, mix it with some sci-fi glue, and spit out domes faster than you can jack off to a Starship launch. Food? They'll set up hydroponic farms, growing kale and algae slop, maybe even crank out some vat meat with a bioreactor. They'll drill for ice, purify it into drinking water, and hook up electrolysis rigs to turn out oxygen all, while we're still on Earth arguing over who gets the corner Martian condo. Robots don't bitch about radiation or thin air, so they're perfect for the grunt work. Mining, building power grids, even setting up Wi-Fi so we can ex-post our Mars selfies. The catch? Powering these fuckers. Solar's iffy with dust storms, and nuclear's a regulatory shit show. Plus, if one bot goes Skynet and starts humping the habitat, we're screwed from 140 million miles away. Still, SpaceX or NASA could pull it off if they stop jerking each other off with red tape. Want to make it fun? Program a robot to moonwalk while building a Mars bar with a dildo-shaped chimney. What risk does prolonged space exposure pose to the human body? Prolonged space exposure will turn your body into a fucked up mess faster than a Vegas bender, and it ain't pretty. Zero gravity makes your bones brittle as a stripper's heels. Astronauts lose one to 2% of bone mass monthly. So after a year, you're basically a walking osteoporosis ad. Muscles, they atrophy like a neglected tinder profile. Your ass and legs will be weaker than a cheap cocktail. Radiation's the real cock blocker. Outside Earth's magnetic shield, cosmic rays and solar flares zap your DNA, hiking cancer risk by 3% per Mars trip, per NASA's estimates. Your eyes might go wonky. Fluid shifts in microgravity can fuck your vision, leaving you squinting like a drunk trying to read a slot machine. Immune system, it tanks, letting infections party harder than a frat house. Blood clots, heart rhythm issues, and even brain fog from cosmic rays screwing your neurons. It's a shit show. Oh, and don't forget psychological torment. Being cooped up in a tin can with the same assholes for months will make you want to shove a dildo in your ear just for entertainment. Mitigation, radiation shields, exercise rigs, and gene editing wizardry might help, but we're years from cracking it. By 2040, we might keep you alive, but you'll still come back looking like a radiated raisin with a side of crazy. Want to test it? I'll lock you in a closet with a UV lamp and call it Mars Prep. <laughs>